This is Rock Leach with Social Fire. And listen, on today's podcast, and y'all know this is the Social Fire podcast, I got a guest for y'all. Listen, we was doing a video a little while ago, reacting to a video, and I said, who is this woman? I didn't know who the woman was. I didn't know she was. I'm telling you, I was I was a little wondering, who, who is this? What is who is this woman out here preaching like this, going off like this on this on this subject? Now, listen, uh, most of you all remember when I reacted and I'm going to bring it back uh, when I reacted to the baby mama sermon. That's what it was labeled. I think that's what it went viral as. Well, we have her here and we have her to be able to give us some context to what was really going on there. Now, you don't want to miss this video. Now, t this is going to be really good. I, I'm excited, y'all. I guess y'all can kind of tell I'm kind of moving here and stuff like that. But let me go ahead and get you to where we can see uh, who she was, because I know many of you all are wondering, well, I don't remember the video quite well. Listen, I'm fencing to refresh your memory real quick. I'm going to give it to you real quick. And listen, let's go ahead and just show you. I got to show you. We, I'm going to quit talking. Let's go. Yeah. Stop poisoning those children, mm. giving them undue trauma, because you refuse to accept the fact that he don't like you like that. <laughs> I don't know her, but I kind of like her. You know what I'm saying? And she, she real with it. Go ahead. Come on. You are mad at the wrong person. Huh. You telling them children, when you go over there, don't you speak to Diane. <laughs> don't you look her in the face. Don't you respect her. Don't listen to her. She's not your mother. Woo. Simply because you refuse to get rid of your bitterness. You who is this? Somebody need to drop her name in the comments. I, I see why they upset. I see why they upset. Listen, the spirit of Panana. I'm going to go ahead and stop right there and we're going to move on. I just want to refresh you all's memory to let you know who she is as far as who it's seen in that video. And in the video, you all, I admitted I did not know who she was, but I wanted to see who this woman was talking to this degree right here. And guess what, y'all? I got some good information is that she's here on the show today. And so I want to go ahead and introduce her, let you all know who she is and where she's from, uh, let you know who she is. I mean, just a great person. Already talked to her a few times. We, my team and I have had a chance to look through all the social media. Now, y'all know how we do. Got to make sure it's excellence and integrity around here. Uh, and we've had a chance to look through all the things that she's done. And she, she is not a rookie with this. You know, of course, you can see it in the video there but this is a great woman and i want to go ahead and bring her on right now you all i want to give it to you reverend elder uh donna thompson amen we're glad she's here and i'm gonna, I'm gonna bring her on the video right now and y'all there she is and that's not the right background but we're here now this is the right background all right she's here let's celebrate her we're glad you're here thank you woman of god thank you for being here Thank Absolutely. you for being here. Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got so many backgrounds and different things that's going on. Uh, glad you're here. Now, I want to go ahead and give you this. I want everybody to just really know who you are. Now, woman, wife, mother, originally from Hamden, Connecticut, Reverend Thomas now serves as the minister at the Church Without Walls in Houston, Texas. Now, y'all know I'm from Texas. Everything from Texas is wonderful. So I know she's all right, family all right, husband all right, everybody all right. If she is in Texas, in Houston, Texas. Now, she's at the Church Without Walls there in Houston, Texas, under the leadership of Dr. Ralph Douglas West, who's the senior pastor. Now, with over 30 years of ministry experience as a pastor, teacher, and facilitator, Reverend Thomas is committed to one primary mission. And I love this part right here, delivering God's uncompromised word. She firmly believes that God's word is the only word that truly moves hearts and makes the it makes an internal difference. I welcome you, woman of God. Once again, we're going to give you some more applause because I'm really happy that you're here. I'm happy you're here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy you're here. So just looking at this, let, let's start with this right here. How is your day going? Let's start with that. Just simple. How's your day? My day is going amazing. Anytime we wake up on this side of the dirt, it's an amazing day. So I'm I good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're right. I know you're right. Now, you know, just go ahead and getting into this right here. Now, I know there was a, I, I want to get a little context, well, not a little context, a lot of context, because this, uh, this clip 
went viral. Hundreds of thousands of people saw this, saw this clip. And uh, I, I knew when I saw it labeled as Baby Mama Sermon. Now, when you look it up on YouTube, if you type in Baby Mama Sermon, your, your uh, photo pops up a few times with this video. Uh, were you aware of that? Were you aware of that? <laughs> I was not aware. It it Now, that took me by surprise. I knew, actually, I preached this sermon. Um, it's called The Pursuit of Purpose. I preached it a year ago um, at, here at New Faith uh New Faith Church, um, Pastor Andre Lewis, Dr. Andre Lewis is the pastor and I preached for his Women's Day. So during that sermon, um, as I was preaching, as preachers do, sometimes we, we we might take a commercial break is what I call it. If, if something um, is downloaded to us right quick. And that's what happened in the middle of this sermon. And I went to that um, and I started talking about, you know, just letting go of bitterness and forgiveness and all. And so there was a young lady. Um, mm -hmm. who, who goes to my church, who was actually going through that exact um, situation. Her and her husband were going through it with um, an ex and he was she, he, taking them through their marriage. So she lifted that clip and she put it on Facebook. And, on. It, it, and I think within that first week, I knew about it hitting like 700,000 in that first week or so. Um, and so here I am a year later, I, didn't hear anything else about this message. I thought this me it had reached its peaks and it was gone and that was it. And then I started getting text messages in the middle of the night going, oh, you're trending. So I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, so they started sending me the different, um, you know, vloggers that were talking about it. And so it really, uh -huh. I'm like, oh my God, what's going on? So I, I it's, it was still resonating and um, out there and I had no idea. So yeah. <laughs> Why do you think it resonated with people so deeply, though? Why do you think it resonated with people so deeply, though? I mean, you know, what what do you think made it go viral and it resonated so deeply? I mm -hmm. think I think it went viral because it is it's a real um, situation that goes on in families every yes. single day. And I and yes. I and that's the reason why it resonates because it's happening. Um, I, the the unfortunate part is the stigma of it all is that they were labeling labeling it as a baby mama um, sermon. And this is not this is not just relegated to a single mother. This mm. is a family issue, um, whether it's going through divorce or you know, kids from a, bringing kids into a relationship or new relationship started. Right. It's so many different um, nuances that go into this. And that's the one thing that I saw that kind of um, bothered me that it was just labeled baby mama um, sermon because of the fact that it's just not a, a woman, a baby, a baby mama issue. I don't even like that terminology to be honest right. with you. Um, baby mama derogatory to me. It's degrading to me. So I don't even like that, that title. Um, so we just need to call it what it is. And it is a family issue that right. we need to address. And so I, um, that's, that's the thing that resonated. I was looking at it and just being very transparent here. I was looking at it because that was on that video. When I put it out there, which that video is about 10,000 now views on that video. I was, like who who is this but then the the detail that you went in that was what was awesome now here's the thing that i want to share with you um now it, it makes sense now that you've been preaching so long because i've seen people tackle this subject and they tackle it in such a they will the word so recklessly they articulate it so reckless with that phrase baby mama and i am like you i don't like the phrase i I don't like the phrase. I'm just going to put that out there. It just uh, because we're leaving off one thing when they say baby mama that we're leaving off the drama. <laughs> that is the yeah. part that this uh, that culturally, um, you know, that's the what makes it a cultural re relevance thing is that people say baby mama drama. But it's not just for single people. Like you said, this is relationship, divorce, uh, different things where children are, you know, and that's that's I'm glad that you preached it like you did. But after you did it, did you, did anybody in the, I mean, cause le, what was the actual sermon? Like, I know this was a clip. This wasn't the whole sermon. What was the whole, what was the sermon? The sermon was the pursuit of purpose. And, and, and it, 
I was talking about how Hannah, her, her issue of being infertile and pushing mm. through to, you know, all of the things it took for her to get through her journey to, to give birth. Um, and sometimes with, you know, the end result, God, you know, this is as, as, as children of God, God does right. not show us how we're going to get to purpose. Because if we knew the story of how we were going to get to purpose, we would stop and go, no, thank you, sir. And so, <laughs> you know, for her to give birth, she had to, you know, go through being harassed by Penina. And when I talked about the spirit of Penina, I wasn't talking about Penina being a baby mama because she wasn't. She was a wife as well as Hannah right. was a wife. But right. I was talking about the disposition of her heart because you think go we go back to the scripture you read it and it talks about how Elkanai he gave to Han he gave to Penina a portion her and her kids a portion right. but to Penina I mean to Hannah he gave a double portion don't you think that caused friction in the house. Yes. Why else would she? You know, this woman is 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 producing. She's giving birth, and she's doing everything she's supposed to do as a wife. Because think about the most valuable thing a woman had there in that time was her womb. Right. So if she's not producing, her value was not there. So you're looking at a woman whose whose womb is producing, looking at right. the other woman going, okay, she's getting double. So she harassed this woman. Simply because if we're putting it to now, let's come to, come to the 21st come on, century. Bring it to us. Yeah. That is called jealousy. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is bitter. You are, and, and let's be real. I will be, listen, she getting attention that I should be getting because I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So here's the, I was looking at that conflict from that perspective. And I think that's what we miss sometimes in the word. We need to put ourselves into the place of the people that we're reading and we'll, we'll find out they're more relatable to us than we know. So I was just talking about how Penina's attitude was nasty. Right. And sometimes, right. we, you know, as as another woman seeing another woman going through instead of pushing her up and building her up and encouraging her, she took her time and 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 picked on her and picked her apart. That's the only thing I was talking about. So everybody missed the context of the whole message because, they, <laughs> right. you know, they pulled that part out and said, well, you know, she's misusing the scripture. And I wasn't you misusing um, Penina's character because she was not a baby mama. Let's be clear, but she mm. was her. I was just talking about the disposition of her heart, right? And, and that's what I got to with that. You know, with and using it now in context, it's the uh -huh. disposition of your heart, right? Right. That was. Uh, I, I think when I was looking at the comments, was kind of scanning through that, and I, and I could I could see where people were viewing this through the prism of their experiences you could go through and tell who was connected to this situation. Like, you know, they got some, you, you, you get what I'm saying. They're connected to this yeah, situation yeah. on a personal level and it was triggering something, you know, and yeah. I could also tell whether they were in the Valley, uh, it came out the Valley or was going in the, I mean, you could tell Feel through it. the comments, <laughs> you know, you could tell through the comments, how often, uh, this is what I want to ask you, uh, cause I want to go ahead and get okay. this out there. How did your husband feel <laughs> about this this <laughs> clip? You know, because I know people was like, now, now you know, what, what's going on? What you done did? This guy. I mean, come, go ahead. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> my, my husband is so supportive of me. And so and, and he knows me and he knows my heart. Um, gotcha. and, and for, for the, you know, for the most part, he knows me. So anytime that I get up to preach. He's. He's never, ever shocked or surprised. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, cause he knows my heart and he knows Beautiful. what's in there and what, and he knows my standards mm -hmm. that the standards of the word of God is there. So I'm not ever going to say any, I don't say anything to uh, for shock value. I don't say anything to be um, impressed. I don't, I'm not here to impress anybody. I want to be impactful. <laughs> I want what I say to impact people. Right. So I never well, say anything just to be saying it. Um, you right. know what the most not not just for my with my husband, but you know what um, moved me the most? It was the mm. men who contacted me. <laughs> it was the men that were going through that yeah. particular situation who told me, "You don't know how much I've cried." 
This has been something that I've been going through. And this is what we miss. In, this is what we miss in the message. We, as women, we talk about our pain. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and books have been made about the pain of women. Um, and we, you know, it's, it's a platform that, you know, people use to talk about the pain of women, but we just never get to the pain of the man that goes through the same situation. And I, it's, it becomes foreign, um, sometimes in the conversation because like they, they feel like men, it's the, the pain just rolls off their back. They don't, right. they're not being right. impacted by it, that they don't have any tears, that this is not bothering them. And that's the lie. Right. Right. So I, I, I'm grateful. I, I don't have any regrets for it going out like, like that because it was able to also bring to light that there are men who hurt because of yes. this situation. I, there are men listen, who bother, right? No, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Because what you said was good. And I think many times men are so pushed to just walk it off, you know, uh, to to, you know, ju just walk it off, man up. But then we have that's why we have so many so many mental illness things with men because they're not sharing. And then they many times are not taught how to share. I was going you you took it right. God led you right on down. And I'm supposed to be conducting this interview. You hitting some of the stuff for I can get to ask you because I, I, no, no, no. You you listen. You're doing well. It's God. Just like you said, a commercial break. I, I just believe it was the Holy Ghost just sent you on down through there. And it just blessed all of us. Listen, let's say this right here. Uh, when we're looking at this, because this is something that goes on in the church more than we want to admit, right? Sunday mornings, we show up with our faces great. Kids got on matching clothes. You know, what? That, that's how our family was with, with my mom and them. I got six brothers and stuff like that. And I know my mother and my father, when they were married, you know, I have stepbrothers, right? And I know there are other parents that are, that were Pre present, you know, and so this goes on more than we will admit it. So my question in that is, what what do we do about it? What is the conversation? Because I'm going to get back to the man thing, but I want to get to this right here. What is the conversation that needs to be had uh, in regards to this healing? Because as, as long as the church, we just keep showing up, showing up, preach to, preach to, and we're not dealing with that that issue there. How can we help this? How can we fix this? Just give me your thoughts. Well, first of all, one of the things somebody made a comment, um, I don't know which blog it was on, but they made the comment, I'm tired of hearing this over the pulpit. And I mm -hmm. thought to myself, if we don't talk about it over the pulpit, ex when are we going to address it? Because what we like to do as a culture, as a people, we like to hide stuff under the rug or hide stuff in the closet and we don't like to deal with it until but we'll talk about it but yep. we won't deal with it we'll gossip about it but we won't deal with it you Come know on, it, it, it makes for good it makes for good talk or gossip but it, there's no offer no healing so if you don't when are we going to address it Mm -hmm. When is it going to be an, a, a port, important enough to address it? Because we see the child in the church. Come on. We, they, they come to church. We see the baby. We, we see the child. And we see the pain. But we, you know, in New York, they got the signs that said, if you, if you see something, say something. Uh -huh. And we're the uh -huh. only people that will see it and shut our mouths. And we have to, if we're going to use this, and it, it's the gospel. It's in the word of God. And we're yes. going to preach. We're going to preach the word. We got to preach the good, the bad and the ugly. So, at, so what at what time is it ever going to be the right time to bring people to out of that dark place, out of those um, places of shame and offer them healing? And until we some wounds will only heal when they're open. When they're exposed, when you cover them, they come still on. fester. But until you uncover it, until you open up and let the air come in, is there will be no there will be no healing. So we got to take a moment and address it. You know, this it's when good. are we going to talk about it? You know, I, I look at my own family. My mother had me, and she had my brother, my oldest brother, mm -hmm. who's gone home to be with the Lord. She was a a fifteen year old mother, mm -hmm. and then she had me at twenty one. 
So you can't look at this and say that this is normal. Right. It's not a normal situation. So we, we, and my father adopted, my father adopted him, gave him his name, Mm -hmm. but he had a dad. So, you know, we, here we are growing up together and nobody ever talks about it, but guess what? It doesn't make it go away. We don't talk about the pain of it. So we sit here and we put on these beautiful clothes and we get dressed up, but we messed up. Come on. And we got got stuff that needs to be talked about because he was there. He was in the Mm -hmm. church. Everybody saw him. Everybody knew the story, but we didn't talk about it because we'd rather look pretty than get down to the ugly stuff. Why are we so caught up into the pretty? I'm going I'm to say that and, and I'm going I'm to give you because this is good. Woman, God, you already own it. <laughs> Why? Because the pretty thing. So the church in my the way I, I say it is that we have guilt and shame. Guilt is when you hate what you did. Shame is when you hate who you are. And I just did the whole thing and I, I don't want to get into well, the story of that's been out there is, and you don't have to go into the details of, but this is just ex- an example of things that go on. Nobody's talking about it. People know, and years later, it's coming out. We see cracks in the armor now of that perfection that you had out there for everybody. And we already know what it is, but you're still trying to maintain that you, you're perfect, you're healthy. While we see you bleeding, you leaving trails of blood around the church, and we see it. And so, you know, with the whole thing with the strange daughter, we, we've been talking about Ivy Hilliard and Lady Hilliard. Them, you know, I love the Hilliards. And I'm, I'm not going to go far with that because I know that's in the area where, where you are there. And I, I didn't want you to come in on that. But I want to go to this conversation right here. Many times in ministry, there are pastoral families, you know, families, pastoring wise, stuff like that. And we don't want information to get out about us. Now, I'm going to be personal here. I'm going I'm to be personal. If you're OK with that. Yeah, uh, we don't. We, I, we I just got personal. <laughs> okay, so we don't want information to get out about us. You know, problems. We're leading. We're 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 bleeding while leading, hurting while converting. Especially men. You know, we all feel like we got to always have the answers. Don't don't have anybody to really pour into us. Especially with these situations right here. So here here's my question that I want to ask you: How can we better serve? Uh, because you got this pain, you got this devastation, you got this trauma, because you did say that kids getting undeserved trauma. How can we better serve the single mothers? I'm going to get to the pastor thing as well. I got to ask this first. How can we better serve those single mothers and those children who are all dealing with trauma? That's going to eventually come out in the wash down the road, just like what I was talking about, you know, earlier. Go ahead. Can, can we, can we talk about Hagar for just a second? Come on, help yourself. In Genesis, the 16th chapter, we, we, we see that um, Sarah and Abraham, or more so Sarah, figured it, you know, this was time that she hadn't had a child yet. So she decided she would give her slave to her husband. Come on. She gives him to her husband. And after she gets pregnant, she becomes, she. the Bible says she, she, she was, you know, had disdain for mm-hmm. her. Her, her, you know, for Sarah, because she uh-huh. put, first of all, she put her in this position. Right. We don't talk about the pain of her being put in a position that she didn't want to be put into. She had to do it because she was a slave. Come on, come on. She, gives birth, she gets pregnant and she's upset about it. She's uncomfortable with it. She doesn't like it. And she's letting Sarah know. We don't know what the conversation was, but because of the, the, the contention, we, we can almost guess Listen, because right. you couldn't get pregnant, now I got I to gotta have your baby. I got to have his baby because you couldn't have his baby. Now, let's be real. Right, right. Like she's going through, she, she, this is, you know, this contention happens. She goes to Abraham. She says, Abraham, the, the, the bond servant, the slave woman, she's giving me a hard time. He was like, well, listen, what you want me to do? He said, right. that's your slave. So you do with her what you want to do. So she began to give her a hard time to the point where Hagar does what? Hagar leaves. Uh-huh. She couldn't take it no more. She was being harsh to, but this woman is pregnant. Right. And she left and she, and when she, she's, you know, she goes away, but here's the, the, um, the thing that was prolific to, to me in the Come scripture. On. And I'll, I'll, I'll pull this up real quick. Let me see. It says in the, in the 13th verse, it says, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. 
you are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. So that's that that thing hit me like a ton of brick because mm -hmm. what she was saying was, you see me. I fi mm -hmm. somebody finally sees me, sees what I'm going through, sees what I'm sees what I'm feeling. God sees me. So this mm -hmm. woman did not feel seen. What can we do for the single woman? We can see her. We can't minister to people we do not see. So when we put the name Ma baby mama on her, Come on. when we put that derogatory term on her, we're not seeing her. We're That's putting good. on her issues that we think that she has. You don't know her story. You don't know what, what made her come to this point. You don't know why she's lashing out. We don't we don't have the context of wondering why we can only assume why Hagar was lashing out and right, why she right. had this thing. We can only assume that. But we have people that we could ask the question to. But instead, this now what 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 happened with Hagar? She was out in isolation. Mm -hmm. She was rejected. She was betrayed and reject because now you, you got her pregnant. She's pregnant with a child and you cast her out. What do we do with the single women in our church? Come on. We may not cast them out physically, but we do not socialize with them to understand what you're going through. What do you need from me? How can I show her God in me? How can she see God? Because until but Hagar, she when she got a chance to God for God to see her, she saw him as well. It was an exchange. She come on, was, come on. and then she saw him. We need to be able to get them to see God in their situation. How can we minister to them if we don't see them? Come on. If we do not relate to them, if we don't take the time to have a conversation with them, honey, what is your story? What makes you lash out? He's not. And if you took the time to hear her story, then you can minister to her and say, you know what? You're not, you're not mad at him. You are mad at yourself. Mm. Don't be mad at you. It's okay. Listen, you didn't pick. Some of us didn't pick right either. Some of us right. missed it. Come on. We just didn't have a baby by, you know, we didn't, <laughs> there was no baby, but we didn't pick right. All right. Come on. We didn't, we didn't with the right person it's the grace of god you understand what I'm, like yes there's so many components to that so we can do we can do the greatest service to the single mothers around us by just supporting them telling them and, and stirring in them and making sure that they're still focused on their purpose, letting them know that this is not it. And I'm so sick and tired of people telling them that because they've had a baby, it's going to be hard for you to get a husband. It's going to be hard for you to be loved. We can tell her she is worth, she's worth loving and that she has value that a child having a child and being raised by herself does not mean that she does not have value. We Come can, see her. that's what we can do for her. whenever they don't see their value. Uh, that's how people get them at a discount. I think that it is very exactly. important. Oh, you, you, you preaching, preaching right now. That's why I'm not stopping you. You, you working this. And listen, I think that there are, uh, I'm so glad the more you talk and the more you're just dropping revelation, this situational revelation that God has given you. I'm just like, Lord, thank you. <laughs> I'm like, thank you for this show. This is amazing. <laughs> uh, so just just looking at that, because that goes on a lot where, you know, you, you my mother, let me go to my mother. My mother had uh, my brother when she was 16, child of a uh, pastor and wife. And uh, this was, you know, 50 years ago. Was I'm, I'm getting ready to turn 50 next year. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Didn't think I'd make it past 25. That's another story. So uh, getting ready to uh, turn. So she was the uh, uh, daughter, had gotten pregnant with my brother. The very next year was getting ready that had got pregnant with me and was hiding it. Right. I thank God for my mother because she told me this and this came from a very vulnerable place. But she said she told me because she wanted to know, wanted me to understand my godly significance. She said, baby, you ain't got time to play around 
because I'm going to tell you what happened before you got here, you know. And so she uh, back then in Tyler, Texas, you know, uh, 49 years ago, that's my age. Uh, they didn't have uh, abortion clinics. And Lord, I'm going to share some stuff here. Uh, they didn't have abortion clinics. And she uh, was going to had talked to my aunt, my oldest aunt, about taking her to Dallas, where they did. They got up at three o'clock in the morning. And she told me this testimony. Got up at three o'clock in the morning because she didn't want my grandfather and grandmother to go through the embarrassment wow. of she's pregnant again. You get what I'm saying? She's yeah. pregnant again. And I'm almost emotional telling this story. And so she said uh, they got up to sneak. They was going to sneak. My aunt had already went out there and had the car ready. And, you know, she had got up bad because they was going to get on going up there. And she said uh, she got up and they was heading to the she was heading to the door. My grandmama, big mama is what we called her, got up. Now, she don't normally ever. So my mama told me big mama don't never get up at the night. You know, she get up somebody in trouble because she had to wake up. <laughs> she got up and and called her at the door and said, Salira, that's my mama's name, Salira. Salira, she said, uh, you can go and get back in the bed and quit walking around here like don't nobody know you're pregnant. She said, God gave us the strength for the first and we're going to deal with the second one. You are our daughter. Go get back in the bed. And here I am. Here. <laughs> wow. Here I am, 49 years old. And no, I ain't got time. But I'm going to tell you how much of the enemy to even try to stop me more with getting here. When I when she, when I was getting ready to be born, oh, she shared everything with me. And I'm thanking God for it. But it just goes to that young lady who we put marks on because they, they have, uh, they're have they pregnant, that, you know, fell in love, chose the wrong person. And we mark them uh, for failure. And that's the devil. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that I don't know why in the world folk want to put their daughters out and just give them to the devil. I don't, I don't understand that. And so let me finish this up. Cause I want you to talk. This is uh, so when she, when I was getting ready to be born now, here I am uh, nine pounds, uh, 10 ounces monster baby <laughs> said they was trying to turn me around in a stomach and I wouldn't turn around. Wow. And she said, so I was, uh, I had to be born feet first. Now I joke with and tell her, you know, I was born feet first cause I had to get busy. I had somewhere to go. I tell her that. <laughs> now she probably in heaven laughing at me cause I've been telling that joke for years. Uh, and she said, but that's a part of why they named me rock. Rockman is my full name Rockman. And it's a uh, Arabic name means beneficent. A uh, man of charity, man of love. And uh, she says, so baby, when you out here wanting to quit, wanting to stop, I need you to understand that even the devil knew your destiny. The devil knows what you're supposed to be here to do. And he tried to do everything to get me to abort you, to believe that I could not bring you to term. And you're still here. And really, I hear her voice when I get to my darkest moments. And yes, that's why I'm glad you hit the man. I'm so glad you hit the man with our trauma, with our things that go on in our mind. You know, God will many times show us the promise, but he don't show us the process because we got to trust yes. him, which is why yes. I understand why it says now seek ye first. Hiya. The kingdom yes. of God is righteousness and all these things will be added. I don't understand everything, but I hear her voice in those situations. And when I see young ladies who are done like that, I can't help but remember my mom's story. You get what I'm saying? Yes. How important is it? And I'm going to get to this because I, I got to stop before I start crying and going on. But how important is it for young ladies to realize that it's not just the child that you're having. It's not just the mistake. There is purpose in what's going on. And God's got a revelation in this in this particular situation. How important is that? It's, it's important because. First of all, you, anytime to any any time that that seed <laughs> makes it to that egg and mm -hmm. you know it's millions that has to get there that is intentional you were determined to get there and once you like god in his creation and his wisdom every ba that baby has a purpose mm -hmm. and i think we just need to understand we if we understood the uh, just the mind how God we 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 see God whenever we hold our children we mm -hmm. see to me and I'll, I'll speak for myself I look at that and I go how awesome God is I can't yes. explain 
but to uh, to see and to hold and to touch your child. You see how if you see a baby born, then you go, oh, my God. Yes. So, you know, that that's why I think it's important for the church to address sex and sexuality in the sense of let's just let's, let's be clear. I'm going to put this out there and I know people like are not probably mm -hmm. going to like what I'm going to say, but whatever. Um, yeah. The church is sexually active. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> help yourself, woman. Help you. <laughs> You're right. Public service announcement for those that did not know. This is the for case. those for those of you who go. Well, they ought to. They ought to stop this. And they ought to stop that. Listen. It, you here because the church is sexually active, right? Your 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 dad and mom got you. Were trying to figure out why their anniversary is forty eight years, and you fifty two. The church, yes, is sexually yes. active. What would the guy? So, <laughs> with that being said, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. with that being said, we have to t we have to in order for this to be effective in order to. Um, get our women, uh, not just our young women, but we're going to have to educate our boys as well. Come because on. what we do is we tell the girls, mm -hmm. keep your legs closed. Mm -hmm. But then we pat the boys on the back and tell them, hey, you know, that's good. You did yeah. that. So we got to find some balance in here to help them understand. Tell that young man, your seed is valuable. Yes. Yes. So don't spread it. Don't give it away. Don't. So we have to ex, we have to assign value to each to our children and then take them to the word of God and help them to understand why it's valuable hmm. so that we won't continue to, to pass on traumatic experiences because we got people that are mishandling something that is so beautiful. If it wasn't so good, everybody wouldn't be doing it. Listen, let me let me ask you this right here. Now, I know your sermon touched on the touched on the you know the role of uh, of mothers, and you've kind of alluded to it a little bit. We've kind of talked, but I want you to go down through there with fathers. Now, I did see one of the comments where somebody said, uh, "You know, we why you didn't bring up the men or something like that." And I believe you're. I, I'm I'm thinking it was you that responded and said that, uh, you know, that's men that need to basically. I'm paraphrasing. Men need to you know bring up the men. You know, uh, this was a uh, event that you were at that you were preaching to women right. you know uh and so i think that was the comment but what address the fathers you know because i know you touched on the mothers and because it's a complicated role of fathers you know and it's complicated family dynamics when there are other children different things like that the encouragement you talked on the men different things like that as far as those reaching out to you talk there i want you to talk there and then after that i want you to give me some encouragement for my mother like she would have came to you and said i'm pregnant uh and my yeah. my Mother and father, go ahead, go ahead, let's go. Um, for the men, that for the fine. men, for the mm -hmm. men, let me. I, I would say this to the men um, your role hmm. in, in your role in the lives of your children are invaluable. So, understanding this because we always address it and make it a woman's issue, like even down to the point of. You know, if you had taken birth control, if you had done that and you and so it's all of the shame and everything is always put on um, a, a, the woman. It, a, the load mm -hmm. of everything is put on her. And and then we see when I addressed in my sermon, I said, you know, about her being upset and about her being bitter. Right. But understand this, that a lot of men have mishandled not every man, but let's speak truthful you have mishandled that woman and yes. a woman only she responds in anger she might respond in frustration but until you can stand up and say i'm sorry for how i treated you how i mishandled you Come i on. did not handle your heart right hmm. i did not and listen for those of you who date while you're married <laughs> because a Go lot of is because you're dating while you're married mm. and you're bringing, you're breaking heart. You're breaking the heart of the woman who trusts you and you're bringing 
pain and bitterness to somebody else. So I, I, I think the man has to understand his role in the traumatic experiences of his children, having now between an Abraham experience where you between the wife and the baby mama, let's just be real. Um, Abraham, he decided to take his hands out of the situation instead of saying, that's my child in there. Let's, let's bring it to 2024. Instead on, of saying that that's my child who you're casting out that's inside of, he didn't have to love her, but he could have loved the child. That's all I'm saying. That's and good. So most of the time we are looking at a situation where men they'll cast the woman away and 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 don't because he doesn't want to deal with her he forgets that he has to still have responsibility for that child that mm. he fathered you don't get to walk away you don't Come get on. to throw up your hands be a man and apologize so that you can bring healing and your, your child can have wholeness right Wow. That's all. That, and I, 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 I believe we need to stay at the place of healing because we are still talking about healing. Yes, and yes, yes. About healing in the family. I think it will start with with apologies and forgiveness, and okay. uh, and true for true apologies. And that is how how I know that that apology will be genuine. Not me. How she will know is that then you will take action. By you don't babysit your child. I. Uh, that's you, you come on when we get the mentality that yeah i gotta go get my i gotta go pick up some, um you know i gotta pick up junior because i gotta babysit him this babysit. weekend no you got to raise junior you got to spend time with junior you got to pour into junior that's you that is a part of you so when fathers really begin to understand how powerful their voice is in, in my house, let me tell you something. I can, mm -hmm. I can talk to my children and tell them to sit down a million times. My husband will walk in and go sit down. The whole house gets still. Just his voice. He ain't got to do anything. I could be pulling right. out my hair. But it, it, you have to understand that your voice alone, yes. your authority your love, it means something to your child. Mm. They need you. They need, even if you're, if, even with them saying him, you're, the father stepping in and he might give discipline, but that's love to them because mm. they understand my daddy cares. Come on. So the father can, can do his role simply by being there and, and ministering to the woman you hurt. Right. Because not every single mother is single. There's some single mothers who are married. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> he might be in the house bringing the, but he's not there for his children. She carries the load. She, oh she goes Ooh. to the schoolhouse. She's there helping with the homework. You, and, and I'm talking to some preachers. You out there running the road while your wife is raising your children like she doesn't have a spouse. My and God. You're engagements because you don't want to deal with your family. But we don't want to talk about that because that's the ugly Ooh. side. Ooh. <laughs> we don't Woman of God, listen. Uh, y'all listen, I know y'all watching this video. Y'all, I wasn't ready for what what she said. Like you going down through that. When I tell you go, this is good. This I I normally and, and I'm gonna be transparent here. I'm normally I'm a good talker, so I'm usually ready to kind of you know undergird the conversation, kind of push it in the direction. Listen, I just let you go. You just need a microphone. <laughs> I see why it went viral. God, this, you need to be viral. My God. Especially when you talked about, because you're right, don't nobody talk about that. Single mother, they're married and still a single mother. That, ooh, I have pastor friends right now that stay on the road, happy to be on the road because they, they you know, men, men are big on respect. What, ladies are usually big on love. And so it looks respectful when you out there get all these engagements and stuff like that. And uh, the problem with that many times is that, you know, and, and, this is a side note. Sometimes they build an offerings by doing corrupt things, you know, uh, right. gimmicks and different things like that. You know how that goes. And so it looks respectful. He's gone. He's always preaching. They got to have him. But then ministry becomes the other woman. Right. And, and I, OK, I'm, I'm going to talk from experience there because that was me. <laughs> I'm a, I, I know. I know. 
And so there is while you're out there, you're paying the bills, but you're paying you're also paying an unseen cost yes. that you're not. You you hit that. Wow. Go on talk. If you want to talk more on that, because that was good. You that was good before we get into the mama thing. But you you go ahead. But see that this is the conversations that we don't they that the church doesn't have. And whether it's a forum, whether it's, you know, a retreat, whether it is, we want to make the gospel side, you know, we, we want to, you know, have, have faith in God. Yes, I have faith, but I'm hurting because I, I haven't seen my husband in two weeks. And he's not I a truck driver. He, he's just, a he's a preacher and I ain't seen him. In I haven't seen him and he's in the other room. He's a, he's he's always in the man cave. We don't have conversations. Listen so we're here, but we ain't talking. <laughs> that is real. I ain't seen him in here in the other room. Powerful. We ain't talking about that. Oh my goodness. What advice will you give them? Because I know we go what we get into. I know what I kind of preloaded this with, but I want you to go and go here. What advice will you give that woman who's a single mother? single woman in the house and he in the other room what what advice would you give her help her because we done brought it up now you got the, you got to help her. <laughs> this is and and i and and there i do marriage counseling as well and the one of the Come things on. that um i like to 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 have because me and my, I'll, I'll tell you what me and my husband do okay we have what we call love check-ins mm. and love check-ins is what you do Every now and again, you sit down as a couple and you talk with 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 the understanding that this is a conversation that will not lead to war. We are talking because we need to be understood. We need you to hear. I need you to hear my heart. I need to hear your heart. I think what we get lost in is we stop having the check ins because we assuming everything's OK. And maybe mm -hmm. he's in the other room. And, and let me let me put this out there. Men, again, have pain that they deal with. They have loads that they deal with. Yeah. They, they carry the load of the family on their shoulders. They may not be emotional and talk like we do because we, we, we talk and they internalize. So mm -hmm. we understand the difference of how we, we talk to one another. We get that. Right. But it's unfair for you. To, to walk away and I'm here because we're supposed to have a friendship. I'm here for you. So th this is the safe place. Ooh, that and is the good. reason why you become and, and, and the reason why she becomes an unsafe place for you because she's angry, she's upset because she misses you. So in uh, order for you to really have a meeting of the minds, you have you, you have to have a love check in. Every six months, every year, whatever it is that works for you, once a week, once a month, however, it, in your family dynamic, you, it, whenever you stop communicating, you give way to, to, for Satan to have a, a place in your marriage. With a minute you have, it's been a month since you had a conversation and you guys are just passing by. Wow. There's, wow. there's, a, there's, a, there's, that's an indication there's a problem there. And then every time you grab, when she sees you, you're grabbing your bag and you're leaving. I got to go. I got to go. It's, it's you're leaving for a reason. And she feels abandoned and there's no conversation. And this is why you get people who have been married for 30 years and the kids leave and they go. We're divorcing. <laughs> we they 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 don't even know each other anymore. They don't even recognize each other. Wow. So if I can talk to you, Pastor Leach, if I can have a conversation with you and then I get in the car and I have nothing to say to the person that I took a vow with, that's a problem. <laughs> a problem. That's a big problem. Woo. And until we have true communication, until we can have honest communication and honest um, confrontation is not a bad thing. We've made it look like it's a bad thing, but until right. we confront some, some some situations and some issues, we cannot have a healthy marriage. So we have to have healthy marriages in the body of Christ. Right. Because what right. what before I married my husband, I had so I had this lady say to me, 
you're going to have a hard, it's going to be hard. It's going to be bad. It's going to be this. I mean, she had so much to say. And I looked at her and I said, you and the devil are a liar. That's your experience. (laughs) And that's not going to be my experience. Let's just just talk about that. I got to get that to you. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. So I want to say to, to her, to, um, um, to, to, to the wife and to the husband, I'll say Mm -hmm. this talk and i mean i say talk have an honest this is how i'm feeling conversation and don't we we, we're had you have it with the intent of reaching a solution not just because i need to tell you off the dub no that's how the enemy comes in be Mm -hmm. angry but what sin not not. the sin comes in when you you shooting arrows and darts at each other to hurt each other But Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you because I need you to hear my heart because I don't want to lose you and I don't want you to lose me. Come on. We need to talk to each other. I don't want to lose you and I don't want you to lose me. Come on here. That's why we got to sit down and talk. That is good. So I want to talk to my sister. Don't just hold it in because when she's, when, and men have to understand when a woman lashes out, and she may lash out at you about the socks on the floor. It is not about the socks on the floor. She's lashing out for another reason. Right. She can care less about those socks. But if the only way she can get you to hear her is to scream, she's going to do that. So mm-hmm. and don't, don't get to that point. And men, don't walk away and don't say anything. Yeah, I know you love sports, but I know you don't like hockey. <laughs> So you just gonna watch that instead of talking to me? My God! Like you don't don't use everything as an excuse or a way to escape. Talk Ooh. to each other, and I think it's time for the body of Christ to show examples of healthy marriages. Yes, because we've had enough. We've heard enough of you know it don't work it's hard i oh if if you if my pet peeve is to hear mm-hmm. people say it is so hard why is it so hard right right what makes it so hard it doesn't have to be hard it doesn't have to be arduous anything that god designed first of all he designed it he didn't right. design it to make it hard for us he designed it because it's something good when you come together the enemy has made it so that it looks hard and it's arduous. And his, it's his, his job to change the perception of everything that God made for us good. He changes the perception to make it look hard. And it doesn't have to be so, mm. first of all. And so I say to her That's and cool. him, get sit down and make it have intentional, be intentional. Because guess what? In sitting in the audience of your life are your children. <laughs> and they're going to repeat what you do. And they're going to think marriage is people sitting in the house, not talking to each other. One going to bed at one time and one going to bed at another time. Never Come sitting on. down together. They're sitting down and they're gathering this, this information. Mm-hmm. And they think that this is the, what we do. So you guys, we got to do better. I, I often say, and I, I've written about it, um, is that a lot of times, especially with black men, the reason many uh, black men don't know how to properly love a black woman is because they didn't see their fathers properly love their mothers. And like you said, oh, that was powerful. Listen, I could have just, I should have just gave you the mic and said, all right, we on the podcast. Let's go. Just let you go. Uh, what you're saying is powerful because those children many times, let me say this because you brought up the trauma in the sermon about, you know, teaching the kids to go say this and all that kind of stuff. But there's the trauma that can happen just by allowing them to see this dysfunction because then that dysfunction is repeated when they get grown and they're, they're thinking that's what love is. And so they have a flawed definition of love because they saw y'all do it. Do you get what I'm saying? I understand. That was, that was powerful because many times we forget them kids looking. Yeah. They're sitting in. The, I was my father and my mother were pastors of a church. Okay. Um, and I'll never forget. My mother's gone home to be with the Lord. She left here in '94. Uh, 
And okay. so I remember a conversation. I remember a, a meeting that the church uh, members had. They wanted to bring him in the in the meeting and talk about my mother hmm. and, and to her face and um, tear her down and just say some church things. About brave. Her. Oh, was, they brave. Oh, real brave. <laughs> but it hurt her. Yes. And he said, and he he didn't say anything. He just, you know, and I remember getting in the car. He, you know, he got in the car and um, mm -hmm. she said, you didn't defend me. You just let mm -hmm. them uh, hurt me. You just let them. And what that said to me as a young, as a young woman, I was, I, I was mm -hmm. probably uh, maybe a teenager, maybe about 18 or 19. But what that said to me was, I don't want a man who don't, def won't defend me. I will not marry someone who won't take up for me, who won't defend me. So I started whenever I would date someone, if, he, you know, if mm -hmm. I, I would say if he didn't stand up to me or he didn't take up for me, I didn't want to have anything to do. If you show any signs of right. that, it was a turnoff for me. It, gotcha. it So. Um, one of the reasons why my husband, you know, I, I, for him, for me, he was safety and he so, to provided security in mm -hmm. that I know that I was safe with him. And I think that's what, what um, we also have to remember as, as for men to remember in order for you to even, you know, to, to, for, to have our hearts, we got to feel safe with you. Right. So that's, you know, and even with the family, we got to feel safe that where, where there's no safety, there's no relationship. And that's even 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 in communication. So, you know, right. it's important as as what that's a part of what we're teaching our children, what that look, like they look at every single thing we do, how yes. you talk to each other, how you love. Do they ever see you guys hold hands? Right. Do, do, do they see, you know, mommy kiss daddy in a healthy way, right. kiss him on the teeth? Do they see you playing or is it always a sparring match? Mm -hmm. So they right. think sparring is, is, is good. It's healthy. It's okay. Right. You are on it. That is good. With wait, with ladies, uh, because you, you, this is good. I'm just going to say this is good. Um <laughs> So here's here's the next question. Let me ask you this right here. You know, as a woman preacher, you know, what unique challenges do you, affect, you face addressing things like this with uh, this kind of a situation, you know, addressing um, uh, family drama, if you would, because every family has some things that are going on. And I, I'm going to get to the question with my mother. I just want to get to this one. Then we get to that one there. Go ahead. Um, and and, and let, let me let me stop you just a second, because. It, what I've learned in the digital, I don't have a problem with women preachers at all. But, you know, that's a controversial topic, right? Yeah, Some right. folks just stuck on other things. I can give all kind of biblical reasons why it is biblical. But, you know, it's it's that that I call them the renegades, you know, that believe right. the way they believe. And that's what so I'm saying that so that you can come from that standpoint, not to validate women, but understanding that scrutiny that's already there. You know, so go ahead. I'm sorry. I feel like in order for me to be impactful or completely heard um, sometimes, and I'll just be transparent, there are there are subject matters that I cannot always um, approach in the pulpit because I am a woman. Gotcha. Um, and I'm careful because I don't want to offend or put off or, um, you know, come off as an angry black woman or, <sighs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm crossing a boundary. So I, I, I'm a woman of a particular age. I, I, you know, I'm going I'm to be reaching that 60 mark in a, in a, in, in, in a few short years. But okay. I feel like I have reached a place of maturity and experience. Yes. That I can speak to some things. I can speak to um, the next generation, whether it's male or female. I, I have I'm earning that place as a as a senior right. in, in the kingdom. Uh, and so. I have the, the experience that God has given me, I can speak to. But also, I, I, and I, I do know that if I want to be heard by a, a lot or more, that there's certain, and there's certain things I cannot say, even if it's the truth. 
Mm. It might not be able to come. That's why I say to you as a father in the kingdom or all of the past, you can address certain things that I can't address. Yes. And even in my house, I tell the tell my husband, listen, I'm in I'm in charge of the girl. You got the boy because there's certain things I, as a mother I can give right. him. But there's only certain things that a father knows or that a man knows mm -hmm. that he can speak to the man. I, I'm only a person who's on the outside that he knows his mind. He knows his heart. He just knows how to redress certain things. So I, I feel as a minister, um, not that I'm not limited to talk about the word, gotcha, but when gotcha. it comes down to family issues, I am limited in what I can speak to sometimes because it is, a, I am a woman and I just, I'm just being real. I'm going to transition that just a little bit because I want you to go further. So I'm going to open it up to this right here. That okay. discipline that you said, because that's discipline you, in this day and age, I believe that it's important for uh, to be a lady, if, if that makes sense. Uh, I'm not a woman by no means, but I have a mother and I have a wife who stood 10 toes down on this. And in this generation right now, you have a lot of young ladies that are coming out preaching that can't nobody tell them nothing. And they'll label this this function of just doing what they want to do as spirituality. You know, they say this thing and I call it cult cardio uh, where they'll say, <laughs> where they'll say different things like uh, people don't like me because I preach the truth. No, folk don't like you because you're out of order. That's what, you know this kind of thing. That's what's really going on. What do you have to say in that regard? And how important is it for women preachers to not only preach the word? Let's just get that right. You, you preach the word but to be disciplined in what you do. And I'm going to say this right here because all men can't preach all subjects on all platforms. It is, I wouldn't go to another man's church and preach on tithing. That's the pastor's job. I need to let right. him, you know, reserve. You get what I'm saying? So yes, people, you, you can't just say whatever you want to say, but go ahead. I feel like this. How far do you want to go with your ministry? That's mm. what you need to ask yourself. And if you <laughs> want a further reach, then you're going to have to have some discipline. You can't say everything that comes to your mind. You can't trust your mind. You better get before the Lord and have a focused message that you that you can stand, as you just said, 10 toes down and and, and walk through this word because that's the most important thing. And when mm. you're invited, there are some things that I can I, I, I you know, been I. Um, and, 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 and sometimes I'm invited to do retreats. There's some things I would say in a retreat with just us sisters that I would never say in a pulpit. Never. Yeah. Cause I can say, cause we're this, that setting is an, you know, a setting just so we can express and get to the nitty gritty. There's, right. there's some things that you just cannot say. So I would say to, um, to the young women who are, you know, are coming up in this thing. It is it, how is it, it? It's up to you how far you go. It's it, with, with what you say. So you have to be disciplined. You have to, you know. When I was young, I I'm so glad social media was not like it was when I first started preaching because <laughs> I would have been canceled a long time ago because you know the mothers in the church back yeah. in the day. You come up under them. They said whatever. They didn't care for hurt your feelings. They didn't care. You know, your breath stink. You need to sit down. Your shirt. They said whatever came to their mind. And they would get up in the pulpit and say whatever. And so I think that's what's turned off a lot of not just men, because sometimes the, the biggest, um, you know, while women face their other women in, in, in the, the, the pews. Yes. And yes. so we have to be mindful that we are, we can still be, we can still be feminine. We can still mm -hmm. walk in and, and be a lady and stand here and preach this gospel and, mm -hmm. and do that. And you don't have to offend people and call it the truth. Right. No, you don't have to do that. Right. I, when I was watching, of course, I was grateful to be able to get the full sermon. Uh, but that was one of the things I even shared with my wife. I said, look at her poise. She ain't got to jump nowhere. And this is not this is not trying to gas you up. It's just I could tell that you have been doing this for a while. I could, you know, we saw that. And just when you got up and you, you started talking or whatever, and I'm big into public speaking altogether, not just preaching. I just believe there needs to be, you know, God called me to preach. 
uh, but it's up to me to hone that gift to, you know, make it better, you know, build my both vocabulary, figure out how to paint a picture to say the same thing eight different ways, you know, based on who I'm in front of. You get what I'm saying? I think it's our job to educate ourselves, to get better in that. And as we were looking, I was like, look, look, look at this. And that's what I noticed on the video when you were talking, the authority was there. I'm not even surprised that you're going, you're taking us all the way through here like, you, <laughs> like you're doing us right now. It is there. And I'm glad, I'm so glad to be able to do this because I think the, you know, people can see the video and know, wow, that was good. But sometime when you see the video and you go watch the whole sermon, you realize, oh yeah, that was the best part of the video. This was, <laughs> this was not it, you know, this was not it. Right. And, uh, but I thank God, uh, for you and your ministry um, and what you're doing. I'm going to go to this right here um, because I want to go to the one about my mother. Now, I want you to uh, encourage, as this is a young lady, a uh, gifted. Now, I'm just saying as my mother, but we're going to talk to all ladies in this regard, uh, you know, especially, you know, from our culture, as far as this, this dramatic thing and they're being labeled and demonized. Uh, because people just don't know no better. Um, people are leaving, young ladies are leaving the church. Church attendance, whether people know it or not, is down. Yeah. Um, statistically, it, it's down. It's steady declining. And uh, most of them will leave and seek alternative lifestyles and stuff just because they where they went for love, they never got to the point of love because they just ran into better people, and, you know, when they should have been better. The people should have been better, but they were better. So speak to that lady who is, you know, not just pregnancy, you know, it might be a drug addiction. It might be something, uh, bad relationships, you know, because the church is hypocritical. We will, you know, call out young men, you know, who, who twisting, if you would, you know, and, uh, and, you know, look at, uh, Shaniqua with five different baby daddies, uh, differently. And, and we don't address it all as sexual morality. You know, we, we judge it differently. We look at it differently. So I want you to speak to, and I know I kind of went way out there with that, but I want you to, sp I want you to speak to that person, that lady, that young lady who has destiny, who has God on her, but she feels like she's in the mud and everything is not working. Uh, family's not supportive, uh, things of that nature. Talk to her. I will tell her there are people that God has assigned to you to put their hands in your back and push you forward. Hmm. And that, and, and, and it may, your family that you're in now, even if you don't feel supported by your family, God, guess what? God has a brother, a sister, an auntie, because I, I know that for a fact that family does, blood does not make family. But if you would allow God to just show you the people, because here's the lie. Everybody in church is not bad. Everybody in church is not there uh, talking about each other, running each other down. There are people there that will love you, that will support you, that will push you and make sure that you stay focused on your assignment. Mm -hmm. There is not one character that you will find in this word of God, very few that did not take a detour of some kind when God's hand was on their lives. David. Come on. Perfect example. Worshipper. Beat, I mean, beat Goliath of all, a little boy, beat Goliath. He was anointed king. He, he did so much, but that one thing he did he killed Uriah to cover his sin. But he was still king. Wasn't taken off the throne. God said, you're going to pay for it through your children. But he did not take the assignment away from him. What I'm telling you, just because you might make this, have this bump in the road, your assignment is still your assignment. And guess what? God knew the end before he knew the beginning. He <laughs> knew that this was going to happen. He already put safeguards in place for you to still keep going forward. That's good. That's good. 
So don't worry about having the baby or don't worry about getting into that relationship. Don't worry about if you if you fail the class or whatever it is that you feel that you're stuck in right now. God has put safeguards in place. He's put a voice. Matter of fact, right now, as we're having this conversation, I pray that you hear his voice to tell you to keep going, keep moving. Your purpose has not been aborted. The devil is a liar. You will fulfill God's plans and purposes for your life. A matter of fact, we tell the enemy to take his hands and off of you that he is rebuked and that his assignment against your life will be incomplete because what God has spoken and released from his lips will not, that word cannot return unto him void. It is out there and it has to complete its mission. And when it's done, it comes back to him and it's fulfilled. So let me tell you something. That's the earth, the water, the word said that the water leaves that sky and hits the earth. It brings forth the seed that's in the ground. Mm. It brings forth what has been hidden and been revealed so that that word does for you. It goes upon your life and brings forth what God has said and spoken about you. So don't you worry. You can cry. Ooh. Let those tears, you can shed those tears, but don't let them be tears of defeat, but let them be tears of release, releasing the shame, releasing how that's the low self-esteem, releasing those things that have held you back. Just cry as a release, then wipe them off. Get up and keep moving. Oh don't, you, don't you stay there. Because one one of my one of my good friends said, if you as long as you're lit moving, that's life. Movement, life is movement. But if you're not moving, you're either dying or you're dead. Mm. You got to keep moving. Don't let this thing kill you, kill your vision, kill your passion, but keep moving. My God. All right. So you all, I, I'm so full right now. You know, I am full. Thank you. Uh, th this great woman of God, Reverend Elder, uh, just all the titles. We're just going to give all the titles to you. Counselor, you know, mother, you know, all those titles. Uh, uh, what, Reverend uh, Donna Thomas, I want you to, I want to thank you. One, we got to thank you again. All that. You, I mean, it's just been amazing. Now, Here's the thing that I've got to make sure that we uh, here's the thing that I've got to make sure that we uh, get in here. How can people who want to follow you, how can they find you? Because I know I've been blessed. I know you're on YouTube, you know, by that name. Uh, I know you're on uh, on YouTube and I know many of you all can go by there. I'm going to have that link in the description uh, for her YouTube. But I know there are several other things as well, because we saw a lot of different things out there and they were all. And listen, y'all, I'm not just saying this. What y'all heard today is just normal. This is what she do. <laughs> this is what she do. And uh, so go ahead. Tell us, where, where, how can they get in touch with you? You can get in touch with me. Um, I do have uh, book, bookdonathomas.com. Okay. You can go there. Um, you can uh, reach out to me through, through, um, through there. Also, my husband and I have a podcast called Caviar and Kool-Aid. Um, and you can find that on all the streaming platforms. And we also will give you our our um, email address through there. You can in, in, do through um, the podcast. You can reach out to me through the podcast. Um, I'm on Facebook sometimes, okay. <laughs> but you can always message me um, there as well. But if you just want to have a conversation with me, please don't my, my name, Donna Thomas, reach out to me on Facebook, Facebook messenger. We can have a conversation. I, I do have, um, zoom meetings that I do with, um, ladies that uh, I'm starting up again, um, really soon that you, we could have. And I, and I talk to women throughout the country, um, and, and speaking with them and we minister and it's a really good time. So just reach out to me again, book Donna right. um, and any information, anything that you want to, um, we'll give it to you at, um, at that email address. All right. This has been an absolutely, uh, I, I won't say amazing to say that arbitrarily, this have really touched me. I'm sitting here uh, and thinking about a lot of the things that were talked about. Now, we had, now, you know, I'm being transparent here. 
uh, Lady Thomas, we had a lot of questions we could get through, get to. And a lot of them we didn't get a chance to get to because the, the law was just leading the whole conversation. Everything that was said, I think we went, you superseded several of these and you answered several of them as we were just going through. But this was amazing. Uh, I thank you. Once again, I thank you. There are some people that need to be viral, that need to, their voices need to be heard uh, in this world. And I just I'm not just saying that you have a voice that needs to be heard uh, in this world. Your your wisdom, uh, your revelation is definitely necessary. And uh, I don't even like the term baby mama. You know, I, I don't I don't care for it, as you are, said that you didn't care for it as well. But I just thank God for you. And I'm thanking God for that little sister that shared the clip. <laughs> and um, so we, we're thanking God. And uh, what I want you all to do is get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Uh, I, this was a lot that was talked about. And I want you to share this. Also, you'll be able to find clips and different things. This information will be in the comments about how to get in touch with her, different things of that nature. You can also go over to socialfire.org, socialfire.org. Uh, and if you're not a member there on our mailing list or a member there at the website, go ahead and join. There are already thousands over there. Also, this is a part of the podcast. This is a part of the podcast. So you can find this on Spotify. You can find it on Spotify. Just go and look up uh, the Social Fire podcast. Simple is that the social fire podcast and that link will be in the description as well and uh i'm grateful lady thomas i'm grateful uh that you did this thank you once again we got to give you some more applause and stuff this was listen this was amazing uh shout out to your husband as well that the, the things the love check-in things was good i got to add that to my list i'm gonna put that out there <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. And uh, I hope that I know that we'll probably be able to talk again in the future. Thank you Absolutely. once again. Y'all get in the comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, let's go.